Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you tonight. And the Lord lift the name of Jesus, our Savior, our Healer, our Deliverer, our Redeemer in your life tonight in Jesus' name. His word has never failed. His word brought the whole creation into being. And his watch will bring great creation in your life tonight. Every blessing we need, all the goodness of God we need, the Lord will pour upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you tonight and lift you up. Well, remember the great things we have done all over the world from the beginning of creation until this time. We well, remember your wonderful works, every great thing, great miracle you have performed. Even as we have come together at this Alpha location at Krak, Ghana, for this glorious visitation. We're asking to, tonight, Lord, that you manifest your power in every life. Provision in every life. Your goodness in every life. And unforgettable, remarkable evidence of your visitation upon our lives in Jesus' name. We know tonight will be a night of joy. A night of jubilation. A night of miracles. A night of the wonder of salvation. And a night of the wonder of miracle healing deliverance. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we are coming to Luke chapter 4. And we're looking at what was written concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And he took the book of God to reach the word of God. And the word of God became evident in every life that very day. And I see himself is eternal. And his word eternal. And the manifestation of his word, of his miracle, eternal. That same eternal fulfillment will be done in every life tonight. Say in my life, the fulfillment of the word. Say, the fulfillment of the word will be evident in my life tonight. I'm reading to you from Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit he changes not. The Lord God of heaven, he changes not. And the me there, that's Jesus reading the word, and the word changes not. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, no change. The spirit, the unchanging spirit of the unchanging Lord is upon me, the unchanging Christ. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news, the gospel, the glad tidings to the poor. 
The poor is the one that doesn't have the resources, the money, the finance to buy everything he needs. The poor is the one that doesn't have any resources to have to buy the salvation that he needs that should take him to heaven. The poor is the one that does not have the healing stream that will heal all his sicknesses. The poor is the one that doesn't have the heavenly blessing that must come upon his life. And if something does not come from on high, he'll be poor, he'll be needy, he'll be impotent, it will be suffering, and he will be sick all through his life. And the Heavenly Father has seen our condition of poverty. And he knows without his bursting into our territory, will never come out of that all round poverty. And he says, he has anointed me. Christ has been anointed to preach the glad tidings, the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. The captives of Satan. The captives of society the captive of sin, the captive of suffering, the captives of the powers that be. He sent me to heal the broken hearted and to declare and to proclaim and to provide deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. The recovery of sight to the blind. Blind. Hagar was by a well. There was much water there. And Ishmael the son was dying. And she threw the child aside. She cried a cry of sorrow. Why? She was blind to the water in the well. Yes, she could see in the physical. But she could only see death coming to her beloved son. And the Lord opened her eyes. And she saw the well. And went in there. And got water to quench the thirst of her son we are blind to our success we are blind to our progress we are, we are blind to the divine provision and Christ has come to open the eyes of the blind and to search at liberty them that are bruised tonight the Lord will open your eyes to your miracle yeah. all the chains that bind you though they're invisible all those chains are broken tonight in Jesus name yeah. and you have been bruised in your life the chains that tied you bruised you. The hands of the people all around you with their bad, evil, satanic interest and purpose and pursuit bruised you. You've lost all hope. And you're wondering when will this end? 
And the Lord tonight says, tonight is the end of all those evil things. And you'll be at liberty and all the bruises will vanish away. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, and all bear him witness. And wondered at the gracious words which proceedeth out of his mouth. And he says, This is the day of fulfillment in your life. Tonight we are bringing the word on the happy day of the Redeemer's visitation. Happy day, happy day. When Jesus took all my sins away, he taught me to pray and he taught me to receive. Happy day, glorious day. Salvation day, healing day, miracle walking day, happy day has come into your life tonight in Jesus' name. The happy day of the Redeemer's visitation. Look at verse 21 there. In verse 21, it says, And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. For you, this day, day of salvation, day of freedom, day of the captive, the day of the captive coming out of that captivity the happy day the glorious day the joyful day the day of fulfillment in your life the happy day of the redeemer's visitation look at three things one two three Number one is the bright day of gracious visitation. Brightness is, is coming. The bright day of a glorious visitation. Number two, the blessed day of glad visitation. You will be glad tonight. You'll be joyful tonight. And the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the gospel, the miracle of the gospel will come to your very life there. The blessed day of a glad visitation. Number three is the best day through his glorious visitation. That day Jesus was born in Nazareth. It was the best day for Nazareth. And Jesus entered into Jericho. From the foundation of Jericho. Until that very day. It was the best day for that blind man who was saying, have mercy on me. And the Lord had, had mercy on him. The best day for that man in Jericho. In every place Christ came. To every person Christ came. It was the best day of his glorious visitation unto them. For you tonight, whatever your condition, they brought you from the hospital and they brought you here tonight, this is going to be the best day you ever lived in your life.
the bright day, the blessed day, the best day, because of his gracious visitation, his glad visitation, his glorious visitation in your life tonight. Amen. Amen. It will be so. Amen means so let it be. And so it is in your life, in my life, in our lives together in Jesus' name. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the bright day of his gracious visitation. Uh, look at chapter 19 of Luke. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And in verse 2, it says, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. For Zacchaeus, that day was a bright day for him. You, you understand Zacchaeus? He was a man dirty rich. His riches made everybody to say, uh -huh. we know where that is coming from, dirty. It was a publican. Now you need to understand publican. Public can. It's the public dustbin. The public can. And all the bad words everybody could speak, that the can into which they dropped all that garbage. Criticism, they dropped on him. Discouragement, he himself dropped on him. And all the consequence of being a bad man in society, everything dropped on him. They spoke about him. They spoke behind him. They spoke in front of him. And they spoke that that man is such a bad man. No, he will not have any friend. He was a can for the public to put all their dirty words upon his life. There were many public cans in the place. But he was the chief of the public cans. But then he wanted to see Jesus. He knew, if I don't see Jesus, I remain the publican, the public can. And so we're told in verse 3, he said, and he sought to see Jesus. Who he was. What he can do. How he could turn his life around. And he could not for the praise, for the crowd. Because it was of little stature. And his riches couldn't lift up, exalt. Make him taller, change his little stature. And the stature was visible to everybody. Our stature, that's not determined by the money we have. Our stature before heaven. That's not determined by, you know, the work we do, the profession we have, and the things we gather together as, as a sand and stone and property and physical things around us. And all those things do not change our stature. He was, he was short. He was little of stature. How many, how many rich people at, at little of stature in the presence of God? 
How many bragging people of little stature in the sight of God? How many public people are of little stature in the presence of God? And, and this man could not see Jesus who he was. Could not see Jesus who he was in the physical. Who he was in the spiritual. He couldn't see Jesus. The riches didn't make him to see Jesus as savior, as healer, as wonder worker, as creator, as redeemer. He could not see him because of his little stature. And then in verse 4, he tells us, and he ran, he ran up before. I, I'm wondering why a rich man should run. All the things he had did not give him satisfaction. And he wanted inner satisfaction. Spiritual satisfaction. Complete satisfaction. And everything he had sought in life, and everything he did in life, and everything he had in life did not give him satisfaction. Even his own life, his character, his behavior, and his stature, and his, uh, the comment of people around him. The man was lonely. The man was dejected. The man was rejected. He didn't have, he didn't have any satisfaction. And he ran so that he could see Jesus. As you look at your life without Christ, without salvation, although you have the sand and cement of the world, do you have satisfaction? And this man was so eager to see Jesus that he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree just to see Jesus and you know Jesus always gives us more than we ask and more than we think and I'm so come here tonight and you examine your life and you analyze your life where you have gone what you have got what you have amassed and you look at the condition of the state of your heart whatever you have enjoyed whether you are dirty or you are you know moderate whatever you have enjoyed as you look in words when you are by yourself in your sober moment you do not have the satisfaction god wanted every creature of his to have he climbed up a sycamore tree to see jesus who he was because he was to pass that way and then in verse 5 it says and when jesus came to the place I'll come to your place tonight exactly where you are is eternal is omnipresent is omniscient and he is omni is omnipotent when he gets to you tonight he'll stop in front of you what do you want what are you looking for And he looked up on the tree where he was. And he saw him. Zacchaeus, your problem is solved. He has seen you. And he saw him. And he sees you tonight. He knows the condition of your heart. 
He knows the stays in your life. He knows the palpitation of your heart. He knows your anxieties. He knows your predicament. He knows the problem you cannot solve by yourself. He sees and he knows how little you are in the sight of God. He knows that that balloon that appears blown up, he knows the air is oozing out. It will soon become nothing. And he looked up at him and he saw him. And then he said unto him, Zacchaeus. Lord Peter, James, John do not know the name of this man. How did you know his name? This man has never seen you. This man has never met you. And you know his name, Zacchaeus. He knows your name. He knows your life. He knows your suffering. That thing you are hiding from husband, that thing you are hiding from wife, that thing you are hiding from your pastor, Jesus knows it all. What can you do in secret that he will not know? What can you do in your corner there that he will not know? What have you done at school that he didn't know? What have you done in your place of work? You think he doesn't know. He knows your name. He knows your number. He knows your action. He knows everything you have always you have ever done. Anything you could have ever been. Nobody needs to tell him a story. He knows you through and through. He called him Zacchaeus. Make his and Calm down. For today, this is the bright day. For today, I must abide in thy house. Verse 6. And he made haste and came down. The Lord had called him. And the Lord is calling you tonight. He's calling you to himself. As savior. So he can save you. He's calling you to himself. As healer. So he can heal you. He's calling you to himself. As the redeemer. So that he can redeem you. He's calling you to himself tonight. At the one that came to heaven to earth, from, to earth so that he can take the people of earth to heaven. And as he called on Zacchaeus to make it and come down, he made haste and he came down. Like it was for Zacchaeus on that day, it is for you this very day. He calls you and you will answer. You will make haste and you will come down. And you received him joyfully. And he received him publicly. He didn't say, you look at all these people here. They will know I wasn't born again. I will receive him, but I will whisper to him, can you just follow me home? But you know, before the crowd, I can I receive you joyfully? He received him joyfully. He received him publicly. He received him wholeheartedly. There was no reservation. 
there was no rival that rivaled Jesus the Savior in his life. He received him wholeheartedly. He received him once and for all. Now that I receive you now, then I will reconsider. I might drop my decision. He received him once and for all. He received him like he never received any other person or property or money. This one, nothing between, nothing between. He received him with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind to be his savior, to forgive his sin. And then in verse 7, and when they saw it, they murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest to a man that is a sinner. They criticized Christ for receiving Zacchaeus. Because they said Zacchaeus is a sinner. Have you noticed that ignorant people always criticize? This is why Christ came. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's why he came. He came for the sinner. He came for the chief of sinners. He came for the chief of public cans. He came for the sinners whose sins are well known in society. Jesus knew what he was doing. This is the reason he came. He came for you. I said he came for you. Because he came for sinners. And so they said it's going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. But Zacchaeus did not listen to them. Zacchaeus listened to Christ, the Savior. And tonight, you will not listen to them. Those who put you down, of little stature, a public criminal, a public sinner, a public can. And they think that Jesus is for them, but not for you. You will not listen to them. What are you going to listen to? I said, who are you going to listen to? You see, our problems in life come because of who we listen to. And you know, somebody says, I want to speak my mind about you. Thank you very much. I can do without your mind. What's going to come out of your mind is going to be different from what comes out of the mind of Christ. I can do without what comes out of your mind, but what has come from the mind of Christ, from the mouth of Christ, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. i am listening to that, and I'm not listening to those detractors and those people that want me to drop the mind of Christ and take their mind. No, thank you we have the mind of Christ. And so in verse 8, in verse 8, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, I have been stingy in my life. I've been cruel in my life. I've been a criminal in my life. 
I've taken what belongs to others to build my empire. Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. I've never done that before, but meeting you has changed and transformed my life. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. False accusation. Zacchaeus said, Lord, I will tell you, you know it already. I've been a deceiver. I've been an accuser of other people. I've been false. My life has been built and based on falsehood. And you are the truth. You are the way and the life. And I come to confess and tell you, my Lord, I have taken quite a number of things, everything, anything, whatever you can mention, I've taken them from other people by false accusation. And I'm ready to right the wrong. I'm ready to adjust my life. I'm ready to change because the grace to change has now come. I have seen you, Christ. I will not see sin dominating over my life anymore. Salvation came to him. Salvation has come to you. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and Jesus said unto him, This day, this day is salvation come to this house, to this heart, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. And the real salvation of Abraham has come to him now. And the real righteousness of Abraham has come to him now. And he had a bright day. A glad day. The best day of his life. When are you going to have your own bright day? Because the songwriter says, There's a great day coming. A great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by when the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Zacchaeus received Jesus Christ. A bright day came into his life. It says, there is a bright day coming. A bright day coming. There is a bright day coming by and by. But its brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. And that's what happened to Zacchaeus. He loved the Lord. He climbed up a sycamore tree. And Christ got there and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. I must abide in your house today. And Zacchaeus made haste and he came down and he received him joyfully. It was a bright day in his life. Are you... Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Really? Are you ready? 
Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? And it says in stanza three, there is a sad day coming. A sad day coming. There is a sad day coming by and by. When the sinners shall hear his doom depart. I know you know. Not. Are you ready? Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Really? Sincerely? Thoughtfully? Internally? And you are not flippant, you are not frivolous, you are not superficial? Really? Are you ready for the judgment day? Zacchaeus became ready because on that glorious day of great visitation to him, he received the Lord as Savior and Lord of his life. Point number two now. We're looking at point number number three, number two rather. We're looking at the blessed day of glad visitation. Blessed day. This will be your blessed day. Shout a good amen. The blessed day of glad visitation. Isaiah chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 8. It will surely swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Your tears will be wiped away tonight. Your sorrow will be wiped away tonight. When Jesus comes, all those tears are wiped away. All the sorrow taken away. All the anguish of heart taken away. All possibilities of judgment, everything taken away. And the captivity of sin, the captivity for slaves, all that demolished, broken, taken away. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. The rebuke, the punishment, the agony, the perdition, the condemnation, the damnation that should have come as a result of your sinfulness as you come to Christ. As you come to the Lord, he takes everything away from you until you see his face. That condemnation will never come back again. For the Lord has spoken it. Look at verse 9 there. In verse 9 it says, And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Tonight, you will rejoice in his salvation. Oh, you say, but I'm a great sinner. That's right, that's why he came. He came not for the self-righteous Pharisees. He came not for the religious, traditional Pharisees. 
who are saying those rituals are enough for them. The self-righteousness is enough for them. Their ordinary earthly life enough for them. The good they have done enough for them. But because you know you cannot climb by your own ladder to heaven. And it's only Christ who is the mediator between God and man. You go through him and you get to the Lord. Your hope in Christ. Your faith in Christ. Your dependence on Christ. And your hope of salvation only built on Christ. On Christ the solid rock was stand. And that is the hope, that is the faith, that is the decision, and that is the dependency on him that takes you to heaven. And now we shall rejoice in his salvation. I said you will rejoice in his salvation. Uh, look at number three here. Number three is the best day through his glorious visitation. The best day. What has been the best day in your life? The day I got out of college and I got the certificate. That's a good day, but not the best day. That certificate will not earn you entry into heaven. What's the best day in your life? The day I went to the altar and I took the hand of that woman and I took the hand of that man. Uh, do you take this man, do you take uh, this uh, woman to be your spouse for the rest of your life? And I said, I do. That was the best day in my life. Not really. Your wife will not take you to heaven. The husband will not take you to heaven. There is only one name. Given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That gives you the best day of your life yet. I got to work and they employed me and they determined my salary and the first paycheck I have look at that and look at me the best day of my life no the paycheck and the employment letter will not take you to heaven It will give you some bread and tea. It will give you some rice and beans. But it will not give you a seat in heaven. The best day of your life. It's not the time, you know. They just called me and selected me and chose me that, you know, the government has bought a ticket. I should go to the Holy Land and I have the plane ticket. That was the best day of my life. No, no. Even people who are living permanently in Jerusalem, they do not have, the, not everybody has the justification, the salvation that takes them to heaven. You're having a ticket and going to Jerusalem and spending a few days there and coming back to your country, that doesn't give you entrance into heaven. That's not the best day of your life. The best, the best day of your life, Christ invites you. He came from heaven. The Father sent him from heaven. 
that he will pick people on earth and bring them to heaven. And then this day you come in contact with Christ. And he says, I came for you. So I can take you from this dirty uh, ground and uh, field and place and take you to the golden city, heaven, so that you'll be there forever and ever with him. Whatever you have, one day of your life on earth, if that thing cannot take you to heaven and make you spend eternity there, even if you live a hundred years here, everything will come to an end. You will die. You'll be buried. And your soul will go to the place of the people that do not have salvation. And that will be forever and ever. Any other thing you have on earth will not go beyond 100 or 120 or 150 years. But now you meet Christ. He came so he can give us salvation. So he can take us to the heavenly city. It is that that brings the glorious visitation a good result in your life. The best day. This will be the best day of your life. Amen. The, ble the best and the glorious visitation of the Lord in your life today. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? We have died garments from Bosra. This that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. That's what Zacchaeus met on that day. That's why it was the best day of Zacchaeus' life. That is who you receive tonight. That is who you surrender your life to tonight. And that is the one that changes your nature, changes your name, changes your character. You were the chief of sinners before, but now you come to be a saint in Christ. Mighty to save. Whatever uh, kind of deformity, degradation, sin has brought into your life. You meet Christ tonight who is mighty to save. Mighty to heal. Whatever the sickness and whatever the impairment in your life. You meet Christ tonight mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver and to break every yoke in your life and take you out of captivity into his glorious freedom. You meet Christ tonight who brings you to that glorious freedom. Mighty to secure you. Secure your life. Secure your soul. Secure your experience. 
nobody can keep you like Jesus. No man can keep you like Jesus. No woman can keep you like Jesus. No one can keep you away from sin, away from Satan, away from suffering. No one can secure you like Jesus, mighty to secure. Tonight can be the best day of your life. Where are you? Where are you? The best day of your life. If you, come, if you came to the crusade here tonight and you have enjoyed all our crosses, all our singing, all our, you know, rendition of the choir and the artists from overseas, I enjoyed everything. If you don't have Jesus as your savior, that will not be a best day for you. Today, a bright day for you. Today, a blessed day for you. Today, the best day for you. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to make this the best day of your life. When you know I have Jesus, I have salvation. I have the healer, I have healing. I have the redeemer, I have redemption. I have the deliverer, I have deliverance. And today, the joy of salvation will come to you. It's about a nice closed. You want this to be the best day of your life. When Christ comes to you, when you give your life to Christ, when your sins of the past are forgiven, when a new life and freedom comes to you, the best day of your life, you can raise up your hand. Amen. Raise up that hand. You say, Lord, I'm raising up my hand. I want this to be that special day, special day of forgiveness, special day of freedom, special day of salvation, special day of joy from heaven that no man, no woman can take away. It's up that hand. As we are raising up the hand, please stand up. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Now you have the opportunity to say, I belong to Jesus. And the Lord is going to take away all my sin, all my sorrow, all the punishment awaiting sinners in eternity. The Lord is going to take that away. You raise up your hand and you stand up. And then you receive Christ our Savior joyfully. You receive Christ our Savior wholeheartedly. You receive Christ our Savior sincerely. You turn away from all that is evil. And you turn to the Lord who has now brought you salvation in this glorious visitation. Say, Lord Jesus, come in. Come in today. Come in to stay. Grant me your salvation. And secure me until I see your face in heaven. Keep on standing and praying what you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your purpose. 
Thank you for the plan for every life. Thank you because whosoever comes to you, you will for no reason cast off. These have come. Here at the Alpha location. There over the radio. There over the television. There in their private room there. They are in those congregations in this nation, that nation, every nation of the world. They have come to receive you joyfully. Come into their heart. Come there to stay. Come there today. Confirm that salvation in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Joy of salvation. Victory in salvation. Grant to every one of them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It has happened. You've got salvation. You've got the new life. And the Lord will secure you and keep you in that new life, in that salvation, in Jesus' name. Our uh, moderating overseer will come now and help us during this time. And then after that, we'll come back and you'll receive the healer and your healing tonight in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. We want the counselors to go around. And all overseers, divisional pastors, district pastors must be involved. And all those that are giving their lives uh, to our Lord Jesus Christ, make sure you give your correct name and the address. In, in Alpha location here, we want you everywhere you have given your life to Christ, allow the counselors to reach you and take your name and address so that we'll be able to help you to grow in the Lord. Globally, wherever you have received Christ, you are in America, you are in Europe, Australia, South America, Cuba, Ethiopia, China, South Africa, Madagascar, UK. Anywhere you have received Christ. If you are watching online. And you are giving your life to Christ. As you heard the message of the convener. Just on your screen you will see that address. An address there is a link that is going on now. Just click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or TV, uh, television, you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, phone number, your location, address via SMS or WhatsApp number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three Sir what the radio D ever be a TV so radio so send a Uhunu send your bay out one number sa a baffle ten times so what's up for so and I said SMS so no your phone number be so 
Our international number again, plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. And then if you are in Ghana and you listen to it on radio or television, you can uh, call by this number that is plus two three three five five two four five one nine five five that is our secretariat number so if you are here is zero five five two four five one nine five five Councillors, let's uh, quickly take their, their records. And those of us sit, uh, sitting down now, if I were you, I will make this day the best day of my life. What is your expectation tonight? What are you expecting from the Lord? Don't just sit down. Be talking to the Lord. The man of God will soon come with the greater anointing. And tonight, I want to tell you, the man of God is pregnant with solutions. He's pregnant with miracles. Tonight will be your best night. Oh, counselors, let's be fast. Let's be fast. And then while you are preparing your heart, you have been praying for husband. You have been praying for wife. And for a long time, you are not seeing the right man or the right woman. Tonight is your night. Anywhere you are, you are hearing my voice. The man of God will soon come. You are jobless. You have been looking for a job. A graduate. And there is no job for you. Tonight I'm telling you. That God is going to give you a job. Your promotion has been delayed. For so many years now. Tonight is your best night. Because there is a solution. Counselors, let's be fast. Let's be fast. Let's be fast. Yes, the pastor is ready. Let's stand. Praise the Lord. The best day of your life. All those unsolvable problems tonight, they are solved in Jesus' name. It will heal your sick body. Open your blind eyes. Or stop the deaf ear. Loosen your dumb tongues and it'll bring miracle upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Before we pray, I see miracle on that choir Sunday. Look at that, look at that miracle in front of me at the back over there. I'm coming to you on the good side where I'm facing now. Here you are. Look at miracles showering down upon you. Online everywhere. 
it is said Zacchaeus was of little stature. You are now climbing on the tree of faith and you will heal that you'll see the healer tonight. Miracle receiver, where are you? Healing receiver, where are you? And the one so in captivity and the Lord will break every yoke in your life. Where are you? The best day of your life has come. It's up one hand. And lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Best day. Best day. Where are you? Best day. Father, in Jesus' name. What a God you are. Loving God. Faithful God. Miracle working God. Our creator God. Healing God. We come before you and present everyone before you. No one is so bad. No one is so terrible. No, no one is so poor. But you have thought, you have planned for everyone. And they want your miracle touch in their lives. Touch everyone with miracle in Jesus' name. Make this the best day. In the life of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl receiving you and standing and staying on the tree of faith right now. In your mercy, heal your people in Jesus' name. In your love, deliver every captive in Jesus' name. In your faithfulness, heal all manner of sicknesses, all manner of diseases in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Deaf tongues be loosed in Jesus' name. Deaf ears that could not hear any sound be opened in Jesus' name. Goiter. Hunchback, elephantiasis, any kind of swelling in your body, be removed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Tormenting demon, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. And all that hernia that causes your pain, be healed and removed in Jesus' name. Cancer, cancer, you are healed in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. All that long-standing sickness, long-standing disease that you have spent so much money on and they have not been healed, this very day, the best of days in your life, you are healed in Jesus' name. Those who are paralyzed, those who are paralyzed with crutches on a wheelchair or the, 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 the wheel that you are pushing, the power, the strength, 
the healing, the miracle of God come upon you now. You are healed in Jesus' name. On my right, you are healed in Jesus' name. In front of me, to the back, to the middle, you are healed in Jesus' name. On the left and outside, you are healed in Jesus' name. Online, over the radio, television, every country, every congregation, wherever you are, the healing of the Lord is coming upon you now. You are healed in Jesus' name. God of love, God of mercy, God of power, do it now everywhere for all your people. Put testimony in every mouth. Confirm the miracle. Confirm the healing. Confirm the deliverance. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Confirmation everywhere. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Best day of your life. It is done. We're calling our national overseer in Ghana here to take over now.